Welcome back to another casted game of Age of Empires 4. This game is going to feature Salami playing as the Delhi Sultanate. You see he has that beautiful golden elephant there in the middle of his town center versus Give You Anxiety playing as the Abbasid Dynasty. And the map we have here is Ancient Spires and it features these pawns throughout the map, which generally favors the Abbasid Dynasty since they do have those cheaper docks. They cost 75 wood compared to the 150 uh, for the Delhi Sultanate. Now, a little bit about these two players. They are both at the very top of the ladder. I would consider Salami to be maybe one, if not the highest ranked Delhi player currently. And that is a hard thing to be. Uh, with such a challenging civilization and give you anxiety has been playing age of empires for longer than anyone he's one of the balance testers for the game and has a ton of experience so i am sure that uh, salami has his work cut out for him here in this game let's take a closer look at what is going on here so salami has opened taking the wood obviously looking for uh, some water out here on the map now, looking at these pawns, sometimes uh, the fish spawns can be rather sporadic, particularly with uh, the deep water fish, which you want to gather uh, since it will uh, give you food faster. And sometimes you don't have those. See, this pawn doesn't, but this one does. Um, let's look at GUA side of the map. He has the southwest pond, which does have one deep water fish. Uh, no pawns to his east side. Um, so as far as the water spawns go... I feel like Slami got a little bit of a better spawn. Look at this one. It's absolutely stocked with fish. Now, one thing about the Delhi Sultanate is their fishing boats are able to shoot at other uh, fish or other boats, which is really good. Not only other boats, but other units. So on these small ponds, if a scout walks by or a villager or whatever it is, the fishing boat can shoot arrows at it. So really effective, honestly, on small pond maps. Even though they can shoot, they're not really good at taking on other warships. So they're ideal at being able to just hold their own in their pond. Uh, you're not going to come up and just burn this uh, dock with a spearman or something because those fishing boats are going to fight back. Now, Give You Anxiety has opened. He has one dock here, and he's placing another dock down here. He's going to take advantage of that deep water fish. I don't think there's any deep water fish here. Is that deep? That's shoreline. Okay. So here we go. I know Give You Anxiety likes to pick uh, the Abyssin Dynasty anytime he's on a map with pawns like this. Okay, so meanwhile, macro wise, Slami's got his wood here. Seven on wood, five on food. Let's see what is going on with a GUA. He's currently got uh, five on wood, seven on food, and he's open. I've seen him do this before. He's opened his barracks. So he's going to be going to try to harass. But I'll be honest, I kind of disagree with this move. Um, just because since you are facing the Delhi Sultanate, uh, those spears, oh my gosh, look at this. He was able to deny the dock with his scout Zlami. Wow, wow, awesome. Um, one reason why I don't think the spears are good against Delhi is because what I mentioned before, his uh, his dock, his, his fishing boats can fight back against these spearmen. So while this is often really strong against other civilizations to open with some early dark age military, this isn't going to make a huge impact on his dock. It would only perhaps pick a villager off that maybe is building a second dock somewhere, which maybe that's what GUA is going for. We're doing some scouting. Uh, and so look like Islam is getting a dock down. Right here. I'm not sure if GUA is aware of that. It's going to be a little bit of hard because the fog of war is sometimes a little bit glitched to know exactly what has been scouted. Okay, so he's going to be protecting this pond just in case Salami is trying to expand there. But this is pretty huge. He stopped the second stock from GUA. Um, building a little defensive wall. I like this. You know, I see GUA do this a lot. He likes to build little defensive walls that make a huge impact. I mean, this is a very small cost, but this is going to protect the stock. Um, and just a really smart play. I see him a lot of time build little, like, he'll build little pins for his villagers. He'll, he'll, he'll wall them in to the berries and then delete the wall later when he has finished gathering. So good use of wall placements. So scouting out, I mean, Salami's gone for one, two, three docks. This is the ultimate greed. He doesn't need to get to gold. It does look like he has started getting a little bit of gold. Now for the Delhi Sultanate. Oh, now he's going to lose a villager. I think he might lose a villager here. Dang. 
Uh, so Jiri probably going to lose that villager. Um, now, the Delhi Sultanate typically wants to try to get these sacred sites. They will generate 200 gold per sacred site per minute. So if you get all three, that's 600 gold per minute. And he can get it as early as the Dark Age. But it takes. It depends when he's got sanct he has researched Sanctity, which uh, is going to be a little bit later than usual. Since he had to build, he waited to build his mosque, he delayed it. So it does look like actually he is uh, queued up efficient production uh, before getting Sanctity here. So very, uh, what, did, actually no, did he get Sanctity already? Oh, excuse me, he did. I think he maybe did get uh, his mosque down earlier than usual. Um, so he, he, he does have that down. He could go capture a uh, Sacred State right now and he's trying. Oh, look at this ambush waiting. How much line of sight does GUA get there? Unfortunately, he can't really see, but man, that would be a good ambush on that Scholar. Um, he's probably going to charge at him with these pikes as soon as uh, Salami starts capturing this. He's going to be in a bad shape. I don't know if he knows that these spearmen are out on the field quite yet. Um, you see him playing. Okay, he's going to go for this far side. Sacred Sight bringing two villagers down to build a tower. And I've seen a lot of players do this, and I definitely have been doing this a lot myself. Instead of investing in those walls down an outpost it's going to protect a lot and give you a lot of line of sight as well um so you can see there how much line of sight he has and then you can build a few uh a few walls it's gonna be interesting okay so spearmen moving in they're gonna try it and see this is exactly what i was mentioning uh you've got the fishing boats just uh dealing damage to these spearmen these spearmen really he's just gonna lose units there to these fishing boats they don't even stop gathering they're shooting arrows they got guys manning the guns while they're gathering fish uh so honestly Eco-wise, Zalami looking really good here out of the gate. Um, and uh, we'll see what g is able to do with these spearmen for right now. Now, one thing to note about uh, the uh, Abyssey Dynasty is they are able to build these battering rams with their infantry right out of the gate here. As early as the Dark Age, in fact. Um, but uh, they do not need to research siege engineering in order to, uh, to use those siege units, which is different from every other civilization. Currently aging up with the economic wing, uh, I would consider it to be one of the best age up options for the uh, Abyssey Dynasty. And meanwhile, he's getting his food, wood, a little bit of gold there. Um, and uh, just booming away there, but uh, going to fall behind on the villager game as far as the fishing is concerned. Spearman getting in there and just uh, causing problems for these uh, villagers right now, but the villagers are just fighting back. Now, these are. Uh, uh, they are able to outnumber them. Look at that. The villagers, they got their knives out. They say, you know what? We aren't taking your shit, Spearman. Boom. They are they are taking these Spearmen to task. And uh, GUA has lost all of his Spearmen uh, to these, uh, you know, these these wimpy little villagers there. They've got their axes. Uh, they are they're forced to be reckoned with. And uh, <laughs> liking to see that. Um, I think, I, you know, I may have ran my villagers away in that scenario. But yeah, just, just fight with them. Now, he's almost got this walled off, actually. If he just walls a segment here. Now, what do we have? I heard a little noise of something being placed. I was wondering, where was it? Was that... Maybe it was just another wall segment? I'm not sure exactly where that was. Maybe it was from, like, just across the map. Maybe it's just a global sound. Okay, so Spearman coming in. Villagers continuing to fight. Now, every time he does this, he is taking a lot of idle time off of Salami. And, you know, sometimes villager kills aren't necessary. If you bring 14 villagers worth of idle time, it could be good, too. Um... Now, we look at Salami. Look at this res already. He has the sacred site. He's got the gold. He is already to go to the third age if he wants to. Is he doing it? Look at that compound defender. Uh, about the eight, just about the eight minute, 40 second mark. He's already aging up to three. While GUA has just now reached the second age. And to be honest, he's going to be able to start spamming out those mana arms to deal with these spearmen so quickly. I would be worried uh, if I was in GUA's position right now. And GUA might not even know it. Um, like how much has he scouted? Uh, man, I don't know. The Spog War doesn't always tell you, but like, I really wonder, does he know how much water, uh, uh, Salami has right now? But he did just scout that age up wonder and has to be quite concerned right now. Uh, we do have a tower up amid, uh, trying to protect the sacred site, but the, those builders are going to retreat into that tower. Salami, look at that, has reached the castle age. Uh, GUA still does not have the res, even if he wanted to. Uh, age up right now. He is getting his uh, fresh food stuff. Um, dropping down a blacksmith back at home. He has uh, two barracks and three archer ranges, but there is nothing he's going to be able to produce here in the second age that will be able to deal with uh, some men at arms. Now, uh, seeing Slami has gone with the compound defender, this allows 
his infantry to build stone uh, stone walls. It also allows them to get a discount for all of those buildings. Um, and you can either use it to actually wall off or what I have been doing recently is you use it to build small segments with uh, towers on the walls because those are going to be basically springholds with much more defense than a typical springhold. So we'll see if he actually uses this compound defender to put down these wall segments. He currently doesn't have... <laughs> he does put his first military building, a stable, a training one night. Uh, you know, honestly, right now, he needs to get get some wood. He needs to get down some buildings. I see an archery range uh, in Q. Uh, I'm curious why he isn't just committing to man-at-arms right now, because man-at-arms would counter all of this. I mean, archers will be a fine option as well. Um... But I wouldn't waste any time. Get this man arms down. They're just really good units. Oh, look at this. Trying to grab a relic. Um, but, oh, does he get this Wolo off? Does he get this? Oh, my gosh. Oh, does it? Wow. Oh, man. Slavi's got to be loving that. He's picked up three archers and a scout there. That is huge. I mean, it's just a little bit. But so early on, every unit really counts. And that Scholar escaped uh, <laughs> with just a little bit of HP left. Uh, Slavi just seems to be dominating this game right now. GUA's bringing in a battering ram right now. Um, now, has he... What was that? I think he has the uh, the Spring Gold upgrade for the Outpost. Currently upgrading it uh, to Fortify. And right now, he's going to start working on this battering ram. This Archer's not going to do much, but the Scouts will do will deal Torch damage now. GOA does have a little army here moving out across the map. I don't think Zlami has the force quite yet to deal with this army. He's going to need to back up. Even though he does have a Lancer, that's a lot of Spearmen. And not to mention, look at that. I was about to say, the Abbey's of Dynasty Spearmen are a force to be reckoned with. And honestly, that's why I was a little bit curious of the stable opening here in the Third Age. I don't think you want to be making knights against these Spearmen. He has a lot of them too, especially now he's scouted that. I wouldn't train any more knights. Uh, man at arms would be a great option for dealing with this, guys. Man at arms counter spears and archers, while the knights will only counter the archers, technically. Uh, so, will we see another Wolo come in here from Salami? Is I wonder if the cooldown, I don't think he has the cooldown yet, but he is. Oh, he has it ready. He's going to try to sneak on in. Let's see if he does it, or maybe he just escapes with his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, <laughs> relic. Does he go around the side and try to trap him in here at the Wolo? Oh, man, wouldn't that be a move, huh? Let's see what's going on back at home. He is now uh, switching to man and arms protection uh, on top of... Now we have a tower elephant coming out. Tower elephant will do pretty okay here. Uh, tower elephants are, are usually your best elephant option. Uh, they are going to be a force to be reckoned with, and particularly with uh, Ujiwe still being in the second age. He does have a decent amount of pikes, which can help against that. And here we go. We've got the man arms uh, headed in, starting to get up on these uh, spearmen. Was able to micro those knights back so they don't take any damage right now. He did uh, take out uh, the tower and looks like will neutralize that sacred site. Picking up a. Here we go. Will we get another Wolo? Oh my gosh, will you do it again? Oh, not this time, Scholar. The Spearman has had it with you. He has stopped it in his track. Let's see what's going on back at the home front for Jiwei. Jiwei did hold off this army uh, with his Spearman, picked off that sacred site, and honestly, doing pretty good, all things considered, here for uh, what will be the early third age for uh, Salami. Uh, though we do have these tower elephants, but, you know, honestly, these hardened spearmen are going to do well. Now, why these hardened spearmen do particularly well? Oh, hold on a second. It doesn't even have the upgrade. Why would you skip this? This increases the range of your spearmen, making them extra deadly. I don't know why GUA is skipping this upgrade. Maybe he's saving that gold? This has to be an oversight. This is would make them absolutely devastating uh, getting in range of units like this, in, not, especially considering all the spearmen he has. Uh, I don't think this is a fight Slami wants to be taking at the moment. Man Arms getting outnumbered on the back line against some archers uh, will get focused down, uh, and he's going to be losing this elephant. So though I feel like Slami had a, a nice uh, build order getting here to the third age, has all these docks, uh, had what looked like to be a clear advantage, uh, GUA has been able to... Um, currently outmaneuver his army. I feel like it's just been questionable 
uh, army uh, build options from uh, Salami. I think if he had opened strong with his man arms, he'd be fine. I don't know why he continues to, to train ca uh, cavalry into these spearmen and not knowing that UA has forgotten one of their best upgrades. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. Now, let's take a look at... Uh, is there any other town centers back at home? Uh, I think we're just sticking with the... We got the one dock for GUA, and he's got the three archer ranges and three barracks right now, and he is just continuing to pump units and quite a mass now with the Aramisid army. Uh, GUA is going to need to fall back. We do have man arms here fighting. Uh, these man arms will be quite tanky, though, in these fights. Um, so let's see how this pans out. Continuing to train more man arms on the back line. Now, if he starts losing these spear numbers, this is going to get a lot more difficult for him. Man arms are starting to get within range uh, of these archers and uh, starting to uh, just deal some damage. It looks like the archers moving in and just trying to pick off villagers. One villager, two villagers, three villagers, four villagers. So I think he knows he's not going to kill these man arms. Killing himself is going to be hard. I think he just took down like five uh, villagers here. Let's look at the military graph at the moment. Uh, and if you look there, uh, GUA's technically lost more units. So I, I think Salami is still in, the, in uh, the military lead in general. But now I feel like this battle is going to change as these man at arms numbers grow. We've got the scholars up. There's two tower orphans out on the field. Uh, that uh, uh, one battery ram being chased down by a singular man at arms looks like rebuilding the dock. Uh, and I think Salami is finally starting to stabilize here. Is G-Way planning on aging at all? Uh, not seeing any uh, desire to age up right now from G-Way. He's got, he doesn't have the res for it. He's just continuing to spam out archers and spearmen. Uh, maybe thinking he can just get some nice trades here. Um, and really, if these spearmen can get up on these tower elephants, they can deal some damage very quickly. Uh, let's see what happens. Now, elephants moving north towards the battering ram. Uh, perhaps a, a bat... Uh, Probably a missed macro for this army because these tail are going to be slow. And meanwhile, in comes GUA's army sneaking on up and they're instantly sieging down. Archers going in, picking off villagers one volley at a time, picking off our enemy archers. So GUA's just doing a great job using the mobility of these archers to just put pressure on Slami's economy. He's picked off so many villagers and now he's getting some veteran uh, horsemen. Now, he wants to stay out of range of those tower elephants. You don't want to stand and fight those. Um, but look at this. Does he take out two archery ranges here? A nice pickup for GUA, practically for free, losing a, a few archers there on the back line. But all things considered, uh, this looks like to be a good grab. Will he stop this? Let's see if any one villager coming out. Here is one villager. Will he get there in time? 50 HP. Can he stop it from burning? Uh, looks like building a new archery range. And oh my gosh, he stops it. Oh! With 10 HP to go, saves the archery range. Called out the fire department. That villager's there. Now, these spears, man, you do not want to get in range of But look at this. Men in arms. He does not appear to have uh, the forced march ability yet, which is uh, my favorite thing to do uh, with the Delia Sultanate. Uh, you can get forced march at the blacksmith, which does he have one? He does have blacksmith. He is researching it. Looks like he has it in queue later on. I think this may be a mistake. I think you want to get this really quickly because you can rush down uh, units. Uh, but look at this. Uh, GUA is using just his uh, his mass, spinning this res well, mask up an army, and he is taking on these men at arms with his archers and, and spearmen quite effectively. Really impressive out of this uh, feudal age army for GUA, uh, taking on the stronger tech army of uh, the Delhi Sultanate. And right now, uh, uh, GUA is looking to be in a good spot as far as the military is concerned. Uh, looks like these elephants have uh, microed back. Um, and a villager going down. Archer range not getting complete. Finally finishing off that first archer range. Uh, I still... I don't know. I still feel like maybe he could have sit back and mass up man at arms before charging in there. But uh, GUA really... Uh, Taking Delhi Sultanate to task here, um, what appeared to be a stronger eco for, for Delhi. Let's look at the villager count. We've got 64 villagers uh, right now for GUA versus the 65 Islami. So he has brought down the Delhi's uh, villager count. Oh man, look at this long distance logging. Uh, but there are, of course, these fishing boats out there. Okay, so we got spearmen uh, going around the flank, looking to maybe uh, go deny some more docks is uh, what kind of looks like to be the game plan here. 
But you know, the problem is, is these spearmen can get the surround on these minions while the archers just pick them off. And GOA just keeps throwing down more military buildings. Let's see what we have. Currently, is that seven barracks I count? Seven barracks and three archer ranges. So if you thought GA was staying in the second age, uh, I think you might be right because he is uh, showing no. Well, we hold on. We say that military wing is coming down. So, uh, man, I think GA is going to be looking really strong here as he reaches the third age because I feel like Delhi Sultan is kind of on the back foot right now. Um, and you know what? Are these elephants slowing down his army? Would it be better to have four barracks pumping man arms versus a few of these war elephants? or tower elephants rather. Um, we can see some fishing boats uh, battling it out with some archers down here, but the archers are taking out those fishing boats. Jiwe just uh, basically harassing the entire water economy of uh, Salami. Looks like he's doing just enough to catch these buildings on fire and then running. Look at that, not wasting an extra hit. Uh, and wow, just doing so much raiding. I feel like the spearman maybe could hit there, but yeah, those man arms are back there watching. He's just going to run away, waiting, you know, being very smart. He is aging up right now. There's no reason to take an engagement. Keep running around, burning things, then he'll tech up. Let's see if you ever got his failing upgrade. He, he has not, so I'd be curious to hear. Uh, maybe leave your comments below in the description if, uh, if you have any clue why he might be skipping this technology, because it seems like a quite a good one, um, in my opinion, perhaps just an oversight. Okay, and we do have archers uh, battling it out with fishing boats right now. Those fishing boats uh, are gonna slowly going to catch fire with the dock going down. And there we go. Jiwei has reached the third age. Now, if you look at the score, it says Lamy's technically uh, 1K resources, uh, 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 1K score ahead. Now, look at that. He still does have that one sacred site on lockdown, giving him 200 gold per minute. Elephant's starting to move out with man arms. Let's see what's looking at the technologies. I think he just about has all of his techs right now. So he's going to be in a very strong position. Moving these villagers uh, to gold. I like the re-macro. He realizes he has too much food. I don't know. Don't throw all these guys on food. Hopefully he moves some more of them to gold or to wood or something. Um, or honestly, I would maybe even like to see a keep drop mid-map. But maybe it's a little hard against Abyssey. They could get rams out. Um, so here we go. We can hear the elephants calling. We currently have four tower elephants out on the map. Yeah, what is GUA queuing up? What are you up to, GUA? So he's got, uh, has not got any of those upgrades at his House of Wisdom. He's got his upgrades, four his units at his barracks, and his archer range. 2K wood in the bank. Uh, looks like a little bit of a missed macro. He's also, I'm sorry, that is Sazlami, 2K wood in the bank. Uh, GUA, there's his res uh, split. Now look at this, finally bringing in that compound defender, putting down these stone walls. Will he put some uh, stone wall towers on these is what I'm wondering. Uh, but bringing these man arms, these man arms will siege uh, these buildings pretty effectively. Actually, honestly, the elephants can do plenty of sieging. Now kind of draw, look at this, trapping his archers behind the wall. Oh no, uh, this is uh, not amazing. Uh, crossbow, but crossbows aren't gonna be countering pikes and archers. Uh, you want to have regular archers versus these guys, not crossbows. Uh, but those elephants are going to be shredding through the buildings of GUA at the, at the moment and will uh, at least stop the military production for a bit. But at what cost? He lost a lot of archers there. Uh, Burn that wall. Look at this. Trying to wall out the army <laughs> so they can't get in while his elephants are just taking GUA to siege. Uh, very, very quick thinking from this. You know, quick walling is a big thing in AOE 2. And we didn't know if we'd see a whole lot of it in AOE 4. But you know, with the Delia Sultanate, Quick Walling is certainly alive and well. And here we go. Elephants tearing through the base. He's currently has four war elephants, or tower elephants. These guys are a four spear Oh no, war elephant getting absolutely shredded there by Spearman. Surprised he even trained that one up with all the Spearmen out there. Um, I think he should just keep targeting uh, these military buildings. And you know what I wonder? Is this enough to take down the House of Wisdom? It does have a ton of HP, but for the Abbasi, you just take out these two buildings and you can win the game. Um, but I think his army will, what? His army's not even trying to get back in. Is he complete? He's not completely walled out. He could walk around. Oh my gosh. Has he walled out GUA's army and is he gonna take out his landmarks? This would be absolutely crazy, but it doesn't look like he's trying to do it. He's just trying to slow down the military production while he is uh, spamming in his own military some great thinking from uh, Islami, although losing his reinforcements, we've seen a, a war elephant and a tower elephant go down. He just needs to rally his troops back. Oh, we do have a relic uh, sitting back there at the mosque. 
Will he start sieging here? It doesn't look like it. Um, I think he knows those villagers will come in and stop that. His plan right now is just to keep these military buildings down. Are there any more barracks out on the field? No. Uh, you know, honestly, I thought this game was swinging in GUA's uh, favor there uh, in the middle of the game while he was sieging his docks, uh, getting some good trades. But it, with this one wall, I feel like everything's... <laughs> look at this! Of course, he's built... Uh, he's building a battering ram to take down the wall, but... <laughs> so Slavi has built a backup wall. Hey, I heard you like walls. So we put a wall on the wall so that we can wall the, all of your army out from your base while the elephants go to town. Uh, is GUA... I mean, what is he going to do here? I'm surprised you see these elephants guys trying to house him right now. Go for these barracks, I say. Oh my gosh, look at all these villagers up here. If those man-arms make contact, that'll certainly be devastating. So just going for the low-hanging fruit, I guess. He really is trying to house GUA. And GG is called. What a game. Wow, very impressive. Zlami taking the win over GUA with the Delhi Sultanate. I hope you guys enjoyed this casted game. Let me know in the comments what you thought, and I will see you in the next one.